Hi, I'm Drew. Welcome back to my sewing room. Today we embark on the remake of the train suit version number two. If you've been following the shorts, I know you know what's going on here. If not, check those out so you can get caught up. It was an interesting experience. Um, the first suit that I made and then remaking it and all of those things. I think a lot of it has to do with personal style and personal preference and just trying to discover what that is. So I know we're supposed to be finishing up the Christian Dior project, but I mean, she's still here, okay? She's here. She needs lining. I ordered some and the wrong stuff came, so that's that. But I still really want a, a rival suit for the train trip. The, the last make, the truth is, it's just not, it's not me. I've been trying to step out of my comfort zone as when it comes to color and print and all of those things, but I feel like that one was a little bit too far out of my comfort zone, especially when my last couple of makes were like just really kind of pushing myself a little bit out of my comfort zone, but things that I still really, really liked. So the audience is split if they like this suit or not. I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't think that I do. The colors are just a lot for me. So today we're going to try and make a travel arrival suit. We're going to use this pattern and we're going to use this fabric. I kept looking at the train car photo for inspiration and I just kind of picked out those colors without paying attention to the color in there. That is the color that I would really wear. And I've had this fabric for forever. Um, it feels like coat fabric, I think, but I hope it's not a mistake using it for this suit, but we're gonna try it anyway. And we are gonna finish the Christian Dior dress. That is the dinner dress. It has to be finished. We are going to finish it, but I want an arrival dress that I feel really, really good about. So we're using this vintage Vogue one. I haven't opened it yet, but I'm about to. I'm, it looks like it's in really, really, really good condition. Whoever had it took very good care of it. It looks unprinted, I'm not sure. It's Vogue 6952, copyright 1949. So, it is unprinted, but it looks really good. We have instructions, we have fabric, we are going to get started. And I like this style. I don't think I'm gonna put the pockets on the jacket, but I think I'm gonna put them on the skirt. Don't know yet, we'll see what happens as we get there, but let's just get into it. This video is about redemption. This, this sewing project is redemption, so let's get into it.
Personal style is more than just the clothes that we wear. It is a unique expression of our own personal values, personalities, and experiences. It encompasses the way that we dress, the way that we carry ourselves, and the way that we express ourselves to the world. In essence, personal style is a visual representation of our inner selves. The first suit that I sewed did not only not look like me, it did not feel like me. And that is how we ended up here sewing a second suit for my train trip arrival. So many of you loved the first suit. So many of you didn't. If you haven't seen that video, it will be linked below so you can go check it out and decide for yourself if you like it or not. I wanna say the comments made by people who did not like the suit do not hurt my feelings. I encourage and I ask for your opinions, not because they will influence my decisions, which I mean to a degree, sometimes they do, but because I'm curious as to your own personal style as I work on trying to develop mine in my new role of my new age and professional woman and mother and all of those things. We are all constantly evolving and as we evolve, our personal style does as well. And I think those who put a lot of thought in it are putting thought into how they want to present themselves to the world. One of the most beautiful aspects of personal style is its diversity and the fact that it's personal and no two people have the exact same personal style. That's what makes it so fascinating. That's why I ask your opinions. That's why I'm always so curious. Personal style allows us to celebrate our individuality and embrace what makes us different from others. It gives us the freedom to experiment, to mix and match, and to create something that is entirely our own. At its core, personal style is about authenticity. It's about being ourselves and expressing who we are without reservation. Whether we prefer bold and vibrant patterns and colors or understated elegance, our own personal style should reflect our innermost desires and beliefs. Personal style is dynamic and evolving. It changes as we grow and learn and experience new things. Our style may be influenced by the places that we visit, the people that we meet, and the cultures we encounter along the way. It is a journey of self-discovery where we constantly refine and redefine our aesthetic preferences. More
so far she's looking pretty good today i'm going to work on getting the let's see the pockets on the skirt and i tried to steam this but i think it's really just the fabric so got some facing and finishing work to do and getting the pockets attached so that's what we're gonna work on today i'm exhausted but we're gonna we're gonna push through so we have the skirt pocket and the skirt facing and that's what we're gonna start to work on Moreover, personal style is empowering. It allows us to stand out in a crowd or to make a statement without saying a word. When we feel confident in what we wear, it radiates from within and empowers us to take on the world with grace and poise. When you develop your own personal style, it transcends the fleeting fads and societal norms paving the way for your own individuality to shine through. Whether you find inspiration in vintage fashion, contemporary designs, or like me, a blend of both, our style reflects our innermost self. And so, as I asked, pockets or no pockets, I was trying to figure out for myself, do I like the pockets or not? And so it was nice to have input and opinions and I hear them and they don't hurt my feelings. Please keep them coming and I can't wait for you to see if I decided to add the pockets or not. So yesterday we spent about an hour doing the pockets completely wrong. They're supposed to fold out like this, but this is my inside, not my outside. And so I recut them and we are going to attempt to get this right today. If nothing else, pockets. So, I attached it, turned it to the inside, and pressed. I think that's the part I might have skipped yesterday. Now it's saying stitch one fourth an inch from edge above roll line. So, does roll line mean here? Does it mean here? I think the illustration is super weird. I have no idea. And I think this is what confused me is because the illustration showed it without it being rolled over. Oh, turn facing inside. So technically, I still did it wrong. I'm going to look back at the one I did yesterday and see if I can figure out what went wrong. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice on the other one and see. So I've been playing around with the pocket trying to figure out exactly where it should go it is so hard with these unmarked patterns because the little the chalk gets erased you don't know what the different sizes of dots mean all of that so i've decided i'm going to attach the waistband and the zipper and hem it and everything and then do the pockets last with the skirt on i'll be able to see where exactly i would like for them to go so pockets aside we're gonna do zipper and waistband and then figure out pockets. Here's what we have. So I completely finished the skirt, still trying to decide if I'm adding pockets, where I'm adding pockets and the size of those pockets. I posted a short and people are split. The audience is split on should I have the pockets or not. But I think that I should, but I agreed with some of the comments that maybe they're just too big. Let me grab it. So maybe they are just a tad on the big side, but that was like the point of the over-exaggerated pocket. So I don't know. So we're going to leave that alone for today. 
Today we are going to work on finishing the jacket. It needs the facing around the back. It needs the cuffs and then some hand finishing work on this collar. And otherwise it is done. Oh, it gets pockets as well, I believe. Yes, so the jacket gets pockets too. So we're just gonna finish everything and then come back to the pocket situation. So that is the plan for today. Let's get to it. Sewing this was very hard for me. The instructions were just as lacking as my current skill set, but I undertook this sewing pattern very eagerly at first. Sewing your own clothes is hard. It is a skill that demands patience and persistence and perseverance and creativity. It involves mastering several techniques understanding patterns, and selecting appropriate fabric. The process of sewing your own clothes can be so very challenging, but it also offers immense satisfaction and the opportunity to create garments that are completely your own. Mastering sewing techniques takes time and practice. Understanding patterns is crucial for sewing. Patterns are the blueprint, and I think a lot of what went wrong is with the pattern being unprinted, I just need more time and more practice working with those really old patterns that do not have words on them and learning and understanding what all of the different symbols mean. And I'm learning more about fit. Achieving the perfect fit often involves trial and error and persistence and perseverance and all of the things. So yesterday did not go well with the whole cuff on the sleeve situation. So what I've done is recut the cuff and the, I'm using a different fabric for the lining. I think it'll make it easier to press. And I'm gonna stitch it on the way that I know how because the way they wanted you to was crazy. I've also cut out the lining front and the lining back. And we are going to complete this jacket today if it is the last thing that we do. So here is the cuff. They wanted me to finish the cuff, face it, then put it three-fourths of an inch from the edge, and then whip stitch this down, which, I mean, may not be the worst. I don't know if that's necessarily like a bad idea or the worst technique, but I'm going to do it where I leave my edges open and stitch it together and then it'll be a sort of pull down situation um, with the raw edges in the inside and whatever, I guess. I don't know. The instructions on this pattern have been crazy. This fabric has been crazy. It's, it's, it's been what it's been. Still deciding on the pockets. I've been posting shorts and you guys are so split about pockets or no pockets, the size of the pockets, all of those things. But I think let's get this completed today and then um, let the pockets be the last thing to do. This pattern might have just been a tad bit out of my realm as it required knowledge and understanding of tailoring and tailoring techniques that I do not yet possess, but it was great practice in addition to the fabric selection. Selecting appropriate fabrics is essential for successful garment construction. And 
this fabric was a trip to work with. Choosing the wrong fabric can result in a garment that is uncomfortable to wear, doesn't drape well, doesn't fit well, or just doesn't behave as the pattern calls for. And this undermines all of the effort and the time you put into sewing. And I believe some of that is a big part of what happened here. This fabric was definitely a poor choice for this pattern. As I said, and as you've seen, this was an unprinted sewing pattern and I could have gave up at any moment, in the, especially in the beginning, as someone in the comments mentioned they would have. But I am keenly aware that pushing oneself fosters personal development and growth. It is through challenges and pushing past comfort zones that you learn your true capabilities and potential. When faced with adversity, whether it be in sewing, relationships, or career, pushing oneself to persevere through hardship cultivates resilience and fortitude. Each obstacle conquered becomes a stepping stone towards self-actualization. And isn't that where we're all trying to get? By venturing into uncharted territories and pushing past discomfort, you unlock new perspectives and ideas. Creativity thrives in the realm of uncertainty where boundaries are pushed and self-imposed limits are challenged. So this pocket I have done and I like slip stitched it in the back so that it's smooth for when I stitch it onto the skirt. But when I tell you, I don't remember how I did this. <laughs> I really mean it. So I think what I did was stitch the sides and then flip it. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do for this, this one. And then do the same thing where I like slip snitch the edges down by hand i think that's what the process was decided we're definitely going to do pockets we have lining pieces for the jacket and like the messed up pockets over here in the back facing and then we're almost finished with this we need buttonholes and buttons and then the thing is done so i'm going to attempt to get this done the way i did the other one if i can remember correctly However, it is essential to acknowledge that pushing oneself should be approached with mindfulness and balance. While striving for excellence is commendable, it is equally important to prioritize self-care and well-being. Pushing oneself to the brink of burnout or sacrificing health and relationships for success is counterproductive in the long run. As hard as this project was for me, I'm glad that I attempted to sew the train suit for the second time. Trying again embodies the essence of growth and evolution. 
Each attempt, whether met with triumph or tribulation, nurtures seeds of wisdom, fostering a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. Thomas Edison, in his quest to eliminate the world, famously remarked, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that did not work. I love that quote. And I love sewing. Sewing for me fosters a sense of accomplishment and pride. Seeing a garment come together stitch by stitch, piece by piece is immensely satisfying for me and it instills a sense of achievement, whether my garment comes out with flaws or not. Each piece for me represents not only the growing of my skills, but the time that I was willing to take for myself and for my own self-improvement and health. Um, because sewing is something that I do that is just for me. I share it with you all and that is part of it. But essentially at its core, it's the one thing in my life that I get to do that is just for me. I do wish that everyone would give it a try <laughs> at least once in their life. I am very happy with the outcome of this suit, even with its flaws. And I look forward to wearing it to meet with a friend that I can't wait to hug. And for that and other reasons, this suit will always be very special to me. And I'm very happy with the fact that it is more my own personal style than the first train suit that we sewed. Personal style is a celebration of individuality, authenticity, and empowerment. It is a journey of self-discovery and self-expression where we embrace what makes us unique and honor our innermost desires. As we navigate through life, let us remember that personal style is not just about the clothes we wear, but about the essence of who we are. So dare to be different, dare to sew really big pockets on skirt, embrace your personal style, and let your inner light shine bright for the world to see. And I will see you in the next one that is soon and sure to come. And thank you to Janet, Heather, and Victoria for buying me coffee. That helps contribute to my sewing journey, my fabric, my trips, all of the things. That link will be in the description if you would like to contribute to that as well. And give this video a share if you can't contribute in that way. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And yeah, I'll see you again very, very soon. I'll share all of the train things. Bye. Oh, now we're going to see if I sewed pockets on or not. Let's go check out the final look.